Hey there, I'm Jen Herman with Jen's Trends, and if you're confused about the new Instagram Insights layout, you're not the only one, and this is the video for you. I'm gonna really quickly walk you through the screen share of what the new Insights look like and where you can find everything because now they're all different. So when you log into your Instagram account and go to your profile, you can access your insights from either the insights button right there, which is now available under the edit profile and near the contact action buttons, or you can still tap on the three line button in the upper right corner and then choose insights from that menu option. So once you're in there, it's gonna look a lot different. This is now what the new insights look like. You have one page with your overview of the last seven days. It's important to note that this is the last seven days. It means if you're looking at this on a Tuesday, the data is from last Tuesday to Monday. It is not pulling in that current day's data. It is from the previous seven days. If you looked at it on Tuesday, if you go back and look at it on Thursday, it's now updated from Thursday to Wednesday. So it's on a constant evolving seven day rotation from the previous seven days. Quick little pro tip on this, if you're pulling data out of this on a weekly basis, you're gonna to wanna to pick a single day of the week. I usually recommend Tuesdays and Wednesdays as your days to pull data because typically Mondays and Fridays are when we have holidays, vacation time, and those sorts of things. So pick it usually Tuesday or Wednesday, put it on your calendar so you go in consistently on the same day every week and pull this data, whether you're putting it in a Google Sheet, a spreadsheet, or some other location to store that data for tracking. All right. so. What does this look like? Why does this look so different? I don't know why they change these things. They love to mess with us. But now you have the single page up at the top. It gives you your recent highlights with a quick little you know, recap of basically what you just saw in the data below it. So it's not really giving you anything different. In the overview, this is a really quick recap of accounts reached. This is basically your audience engagement. Then you have your content interactions and you have your followers. That's gonna give you your audience data and insight. Then you see the content you shared. So all the posts that you've shared in the last seven days will appear there. If you haven't shared a post, it would say create post. You'll notice there's the little right hand arrow next to that just like there's create story, create video and create promotion, there's those little arrows. Those arrows allow you to dive deeper into each of those types of content. So let's break down what these pages each look like as we go forward. So you always start from this page. This is now your landing page for your insights. If you had clicked on accounts reached, which is what used to be, I think, impressions um, on the old version. So it's still the same information, it's just repackaged. So again, all data from the last week, the last seven days, your reach is going to be the number of accounts you reached over that period of time. So it's, it's a total accounts reached. And then your impressions, which is below that chart, is how many times your content was seen. Now that means impressions should always be higher than accounts reached. Reached is how many people you reached over that period of time. Impressions is how many times each piece of content was seen. So if someone sees your content two or three times, obviously your impressions are going to be higher. If you have highly um, educational content, things that are really good for bookmarking, things that people are gonna come back and reference, you're typically gonna see really high impressions. That's the kind of content that I share on this account, which is actually my daughter's account it's not my main Jen's Trends account. And I share a lot of tips um, and I share a lot of information for like kids activities and homeschooling things. And so a lot of those things get bookmarked and people will come back and revisit that content repeatedly. If you look at that bar graph um, right above it for the accounts reached, that 822 accounts is total. That means I may have reached one account three times over that week, but it's only counting it as one account reached 
in that entire week because I reached that same account multiple times. It's not multiple people. So this is actually a more accurate detail in terms of your reach than what we used to see in our data where it was showing you a daily reach, not a total reach. So this is a more accurate uh, display of how many people you're reaching with your content. And if you tap on that graph, that's how you get those numbers. When you see that graph, it's, it's just the bar graph. If you tap on it once, that's what drops up the numbers. So you can actually see how many accounts you reached on each day. Then you can relate this to the content. When did you post? How often are you posting? What kind of content did you post? What days you're getting the most interaction? All those sorts of things. Then of course, you can see your account activity now. This is how many profile visits you got. This is how many action buttons uh, were tapped. This is how many times somebody went to your website link. All of that account activity is now here in that accounts reached tab. I don't really know why. I don't feel like that's where it belongs, but that's where they put it for us. So what are you gonna do about it? That's now where it is. So if someone is tapping on the button to contact you in any way, that is where that action is going to be recorded. And of course you see your, uh, whether you're increased or de decreased from the previous week's activities. And then below that, um, it has, in, or actually, you know what? This is not my daughter's account, I don't think. Maybe this was my actual account. Um, I, just, I, I pulled screenshots from, all, from both different accounts depending on the, the types of data I wanted to show. But in this case, I did have stories that went out. So the stories are showing there and I could hit see all and that would actually take me to be able to see the data for each of those stories as well. So most of that impression all came from stories. I obviously shared a story on Tuesday and that's where most of that reach and impression came from. You can scroll down further on that page and see again for things like IGTV or that sort of thing. You can click on that see all and dive deeper into the content performance for each of those accounts or for each of that piece of content. So if you had gone back to the original landing page and now you tapped on content interactions, this is the screen you're going to get. So this is going to tell you all the things that were done on your content, not from your profile, not from action button clicks, but actual content itself. So in this case, this is my daughter's account. Um, we had 110 post interactions, 80 came from likes, 28 came from comments, and two came from saves. So now we're getting that detailed uh, total of interactions. So you can still get individual post interactions. You can tap on any post and get the individual post performance but this is actually giving you an overall of your total interactions and engagement for the week. That's where this is now buried again. You can see top posts, top stories, and you could click on see all if you wanted to, to go into what those data points look like. And don't worry, I'll have a screen for that in just a second. So now if you go back <laughs> to that first page, now you go to the followers breakdown, which is what used to be the audience tab. This one does not look any different. They've just renamed it. So this one is still the same that we're used to seeing, where you get your total number of followers, your increase and decrease, uh, just like before on that chart that you see um, on the left-hand side where you have your growth. If you tap on it once, you see the line, so you can see your follows and unfollows, and then your total growth overall um, demonstrated with the various different lines and details. You get all the top locations. Scroll down, this is actually one really long page. I just cut it into two. You get your age range, your gender, and then your active times. Again, tap on that graph once, and it will give you the number of how many people are active in that hour or days. Again, this is based on your audience. So I can see from this, Saturdays at 9 a.m. would be my ideal time. It's still peak around noon. It starts to taper off in the evening hours and then the overnight very low engagement. So that's telling me ideally post in the mornings if I was to post on a Saturday. Of course, I can tap on days and I can see what day of the week is just as valuable. Personally, I don't worry too much about time of the day because algorithmically, if someone's gonna see your content, whether you posted five minutes before they logged in, five hours, or even two days before they logged in, they're still going to see your content. However, the day is more important. So if your audience is most active on the weekends, you don't wanna be posting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you wanna be posting 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe. So days of the week to me are more important than actual hours of the day in terms of your posting schedule. So the top performing posts, that's where if you hit at any point, those see all, just like from the very first page where you could have the content see all, stories see all. From any of those other two tabs for your content and for your, um, what was the first one? What was the audience? Um, not, sorry, not the audience. It was the, the content. And, and if you tap on the see all on any of those, it's going to navigate you to your top performing posts. You're going to land on a page that looks just like this. You're going to see all, you're going to have a time frame, and then you're going to have a metric. And so you can do this for posts and stories and everything else. So from here, this is a really good way to search your content for performance on various different metrics. In this case, I had scanned this one for reach. I highly recommend you do this. You can go up to two years into the past. I highly recommend you do this on a regular basis, even if that's quarterly, to see how your content is performing with your audience in terms of what content they are most interested in and which ones are driving the best results for you. And you can change these metrics. So you can uh, search for, I did all content, but you can search for just carousels, photos, shopping posts, or videos. You can search for different types of content. Again, you can change the, the date range from a very small range, like within days, all the way back to two years. And then for the interaction level, you can see from the right hand side all the different things. So you could search for engagement, what, uh, what content drives the most engagement. You can look and see which ones drive the most email clicks, the most website clicks, the most profile visits. All of those things can tell you which content is your best for calls to action, for driving conversions, and can help you determine what is the key component and consistency in all of that content to make sure that you're actually creating the content that's going to resonate with your audience. So for example, if every time you have a very specific type of image um, or you use certain word overlays or something like that, and that's what you're using for calls to action and those generate the best results, then you wanna be consistent with that. But if you're doing that and that's not actually your best type of content for generating calls to action results, maybe you wanna look and see what is generating more calls to action and then switch up your content strategy to match that because your audience is telling you based on these results what they're going to interact with. So stories are very much the same thing. Go to stories, click see all. You're gonna dive into all of the same kind of uh, information you're gonna go back to up to 14 days. So this is a much shorter span. You don't have nearly the breadth of time to dig deep, but you can search for, again, multiple criteria. You can search for how they interacted with the story, whether they went forward or backward, um, if they exited, you can search and see if they did, if they called or emailed or did any of those calls to action from the action button directly resulting from having visited your profile after watching that story. So there's lots of things that you can do to track performance, again, for things related to engagement and calls to action on your stories. And again, you get to that from doing the see all. Same thing happens for IGTV. I'm going to assume at some point they're gonna add reels in there because right now we have no data on reels. We have no insights. Uh, but at some point I would assume we'll see those showing up in these uh, overall insights as well. So just to quickly wrap this up for you, metrics matter because if you give people what they want, they'll ultimately give you what you want. I'm a huge proponent for understanding your metrics, understanding your insights on Instagram. If you understand what your audience wants, you can give them more of that. And in the long run, if you give them what they want, the content that it's a value to them, they will give you what you want, which is ultimately sales. Thank you so much for tuning in for this video. I hope this helped make some sense of the crazy new layout feature within Instagram insights. If you have any need for help with your social media strategy or your Instagram strategy, by all means, please reach out to me. You can send me an email to jen, J-E-N-N, at jenstrends.com, and I will be happy to help you in your strategy. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.